the government is very concerned about your health and well-being and the health and well-being of your children, and therefore um, they want to implement age verification to keep you from entering a commercial pornography site if you're under 18, and I think there are three issues, or a bunch of issues concerned with this. Um, some are legal, which Miles Jackman, org's legal director, is going to talk about, and um, there's a lot of collateral damage, which Pandora Blake is going to talk about. And um, the thing I was going to mention is that one of the significant problems in this is the mechanisms that they're proposing to use, which uh, risk violating in people's privacy. I mean, if you can imagine creating a list of the sexual preferences of everyone in the entire British population, or at least the portion of it that accesses pornography sites, um, you know, it's a fairly alarming prospect. Yeah, so, um, so I make queer porn. Um, I've been working in the industry for about 11 years. I think I had my 10-year porn anniversary last year. And um, making queer porn puts you in the interesting perspective of kind of being opposed to everything being done by mainstream porn, but also being affected by everything that is done about mainstream porn. Um, potentially more, in fact, because uh, some of the things that I do end up being seen as being less acceptable than the kind of very heteronormative, um, normalized stuff, so-called normalized stuff. Um, so uh, do you want to ask questions, or do you want us to do a little instruction first? I think I think you should do at least a small introduction yeah. to the kind of damage you're concerned about and you to the sort of basic, you know, where are we in the legal situation? It's, I know it's in, the, it's in the Digital Economy Act, but, you know, where, what is the progress? How, how close are we to this thing being actual yeah, okay. law? Okay. How close are we to this thing becoming actual law? I was just waiting for a question. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay, so the Digital Economy Act has passed, uh, to Digital Economy Act 2017. It is likely to come into effect uh, for age verification in April 2018. I've onwards. heard April and May. Yeah, we're getting some yeah. mixed signals on exactly when uh, the porn will be turned off, as it were. Mm. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> the problems are slightly more complicated than merely protecting children from accessing material that they may find uh, uh, that is inappropriate and therefore should not be allowed to look at. So, uh, assuming that you are 18 at the moment, uh, MindGeek, who are, as many of you may know, the biggest owner of porn tube sites on the internet, they own about approximately 90% of all of the tube sites. So they have a, a massive dominant majority of, uh, interestingly enough, material that they predominantly own freely in copyright infringement from other people. So they have a huge back-end database of material. Uh, what is concerning about this is the fact that they will be the main portal for access to pornography for the majority of people. And when they turn on age verification, and they haven't ruled out turning it on globally yet, so at the moment the Digital Economy Act states that the uh, censor, as I like to call them, so the regulator as they're called by law, but censor as they are in reality, will um, be allowed to block sites that do not comply. So they'll send out notices and then eventually, if a site, foreign shall we say, so hosted outside this legal jurisdiction, refuses to comply, it can be blocked entirely by notice from the censor to ISPs, so that to all intents and purposes, what I've been calling Hadrian's firewall is coming into effect, as we say, April or May yeah. Next can, we year. can we just credit Cadrian's firewall to the late journalist Guy Cuny, who, who was the first to use it? Noted. <laughs> I haven't even got to do my tiger porn gag, and I had a great one for Noel. <laughs> I'm really upset. I normally start off with some animal jokes, and I've got a great one for you about a dog called Satan. No, it's illegal. It's about the autonomy of animals in policing, so we must talk about that later. Okay, so one of the things, Pandora and I both attended a demonstration of some of the mechanisms people were planning to use yeah. to, to access, to, to control access to these sites uh, some months ago. And Alec Muffet posted a wonderful takedown of the technology involved, but you had quite a, quite a bit to say about how it, it sort of assumed 
that there was just one kind of pornography and there was just one kind of person who wanted to access it. Um, it was Pandora that particularly noticed that the demonstration of this stuff was held in, what was it, a, a gentleman's club. It was when, a strip club. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was a strip, strip club. club. And when Pandora went to look for the ladies' room, it turned out it was behind the stage because, of course, that's the only place that women would be. Um, yeah, and, and I was kind of giving the keynote speech as well. So it was like, well, you know, this is very endemic of where it's seen that women are in the porn industry. I mean... Um, I'm not a woman, I'm genderqueer, but still, like, the point stands. Um, yeah, I think the, the mind geek thing, I mean, maybe we should unpack about why yeah, that's right. actually going to have an effect. So there are going to be lots of different age verification technologies that are rolled out. And one of the things that's scary about this whole process is that there's a whole bunch of parliamentary process that needs to be completed and regulation that needs to be produced, guidance that needs to be produced before anybody will know what technologies will be considered compliant by the new regulator, who hasn't even been designated yet, by the way. Um, so we don't have a regulator we can ask questions of about how this is going to be enforced. There's um, two rounds of parliamentary consultation that need to be completed before we know what will be considered compliant. And only at that point can age verification technologies launch their products. Um, now, I've been watching parliamentary processes for a while now, and the chances of this happening before February are very slim, which means that most porn site owners like myself are going to have about a two-month turnaround to assess the available technologies, um, make informed decisions about whether or not they respect user privacy, whether or not they offer anything in terms of web security, um, whether or not we can afford them. Um, and then, you know, most porn sites run by um, people in the UK, you know, it's kind of like the 80 20 rule, like 80% of the porn is run by 20% of the companies. And so um, the vast majority of us are one or two person outfits who are making stuff from our own homes on very low budgets. And we don't have IT departments. A lot of us outsource our um, kind of IT to the same people. So in February, those people are going to be <coughs> inundated with requests to install age verification solutions. And the chances of this actually happening by April are going to be minimal. Um, so MindGeek are offering this sort of elastoplast solution where they've built this um, product uh, called Age ID. And the premise is that they get about a million users through the door every day on their tube sites. So MindGeek own Pornhub, Brazzers, YouPorn, RedTube, like most of the free um, adult tube sites and a lot of the kind of um, production companies as well, producing mostly kind of hetero mainstream porn. Um, and so their guess is that anybody who's going to be accessing porn at all is probably going to be looking at their sites. So if MindGeek age verifies them, then um, anybody else who wants to have users being able to look at their porn with a relatively low friction user journey is going to be better placed to use MindGeek system because then your users won't have to re-verify and resubmit identification every time they want to visit your website. They'll just use their MindGeek login and they'll be able to sail straight through. There might even be a cookie set, so they won't even have to do that. Um, which means that suddenly we are not only having to pay a tax in the form of licensing fees or per age check or per month fees to our dominant market competitor for the privilege of being um, having our stuff hidden behind um, firewalls. Um, but we're also giving them all of our traffic data. Mm -hmm. And given their business model um, is primarily based on advertising, this is extremely valuable data to them. Um, so we're looking at potentially increasing the market dominance of the biggest porn company in the world, who already have fairly shady business practices. Mm -hmm. Um, increasing their profit margin by taking a cut off the top of all of the smaller niche sites who are maybe doing porn in a more ethical, queer, feminist, DIY, positive way. Um, and in the process, giving them a huge amount of monetizable data. Um, doesn't that also give them insight into your business where they can cherry pick yeah. if there's anything profitable that a smaller producer is doing, they can cherry pick that and copy it and, and sort of take away that business? I might go jump in. For a second. So, um, from the user perspective, I think it's important that while, while uh, my colleague can speak from the perspective of a, a producer of mm. material, what's going to happen essentially in April is that you, as uh, consumers have the choice not to engage at all. You may never want to engage with pornography, that is your right. But should you wish to do so, according to MindGeek, they anticipate 20 to 25 million adults in the UK in the first month will sign up to their federated age verification solution. 
okay? So it's a th essentially a third of the population, whether you say adult or not, it's a third of the population or more who will use that as the primary portal to access all material. So as my colleague says, one of the issues is uh, heteronormativity, etc. cetera, uh, the type of material that people are going to look at will be a very small amount. It will be like judging all forms of music on jazz without taking death metal into account, as I often do. So, one of the big problems that we have here is what are the solutions? We've seen some of the age verification mm. solutions that are going to be bundled together in this age ID federated login. And I have to say, one of them, in my personal opinion, is an absolute disaster. Yeah. And Alec Muffet over there can also speak for this, probably more eloquently than I, but in simple terms, you log in using Facebook. <laughs> Okay, wait, wait, wait. That might sound comical enough, but it scrapes your entire data and then guesses whether you're over 18. Yeah, yeah. So if you've been to any over, if you've been to any 21st birthday parties, you're right. You can come in. You can look at the dirty material, but uh, you've given up that entire data set. You've given up your your privacy on all of those issues. Now that might be obviously I'm I'm talking to a uh, a fairly privacy literate crowd or people who are at least interested in it. For younger people who have never really considered ideas of data privacy, Facebook login sounds eminently sensible. Or what about the one that does selfie? I love the selfie yeah. one. It, it, it's, it's an iPhone X style. You take a selfie of yourself, and that proves that it's you, and then you, then you essentially send it to the service provider, and it authenticates you, uh, which is almost as bad as the uh, door policy in some Westminster clubs where you essentially have to give your personal details to the bouncer. No disrespect to door staff, but I do not want to be giving that kind of material essentially to porn companies when they have front-end data for identification, back-end data for information of all of the material available that they could potentially cross-reference. And um, if I were MindGeek's lawyer, I would be advising them that they should change their privacy policy within the first few months of signing up 20 to 25 million users in the UK. And then maybe we should just be scraping that data, seeing what people are interested in. Because come on, it's fair, like Facebook does that, right? It's okay, we can target some advertising at you. Maybe we can have your sexual preferences. Oh no, we've been hacked again. <laughs> so just again, MindGeeks uh, have had data incursions and losses from, what was it, YouPorn, Brazzers, Digital Playground, and yep. one other I forget. Uh, but these are not people that have a history of security of data. And yet, one 25 million. And yet, one of the 25 things... million. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your rhetoric. Um, <coughs> was very, that was very rude. 20 million going down. <laughs> so to the man at the back. One of the interesting things is it, it still doesn't solve. I went to a couple of the meetings of the um, data, whatever they're called, this group that we're trying to define a standard for these mechanisms. Digital Policy Alliance? That's them. Oh, yeah. And um, one of the things that we're very exercised about was the little brother problem, which is that big brother gets a valid ID and then lets his little brother use his computer. And none of these mechanisms actually solve that. So either there's going to be another round of, we must improve this, this is just not going well enough, in which case we can look forward to another few years of arguing about access to porn. Or, there, I mean, are they going to give up on that particular thing and say, well, we did our best? Well, I mean, the question of whether this is even a legitimate problem that needs solving is certainly uh, open to consideration. Um, the evidence that, I mean, what, what's being claimed is that this is to prevent the phenomenon of stumble upon, mm -hmm. which is young children, 10, 11 year olds, accidentally stumbling upon porn and being distressed by it. Now, there's been some research, uh, research done by various groups, including the NSPCC, which have found that 50% of 11 to 16 year olds have looked at porn, um, which is a very large age bracket. And um, a lot of it talks about pop-ups, which I personally haven't seen for about 10 years. Um, so I'm, I've also seen quite a lot of evidence being produced by the EU that actually um, the age group that we're worried about, kind of under 12s, don't, in fact, 
stumble yeah. upon porn that distresses them. They mostly, you know, use the internet to play games, do their homework, talk to their friends. This isn't going to um, kind of uh, do anything about um, peer-to-peer chat or anything like that. It's just going to be kind of um, public websites. Um, and so... Yeah, I mean, this spectre that we've got lots and lots of children being upset by accidentally finding porn is, I think, a little bit of an invented problem. Mostly the young people, the under-18s who are looking at porn are deliberately seeking it out at whatever age they choose to, which changes from person to person. You know, some people haven't by the time they're 18, and that's fine, but others start when they're 12 or 13. And it kind of, if you're looking, you're sort of ready for it. Um, and anybody who is interested and is looking is going to easily be able to obviate these blocks by using the Tor network, you know, VPNs or proxies. So whether it's actually going to prevent under-18s from looking at material is extremely questionable. Mm. And the cost is a massive infringement, not only of our privacy, of our very personal and private data, and um, our collective security. I mean, um, inculcating an environment in which every UK citizen is habituated to regularly entering personal identifying details online is extraordinarily bad security on a national scale. Um, so I personally think that the um, harms could easily outweigh the benefits. Uh, absolutely. If I can just rhyme with that yeah. really briefly. Uh, the NSPCC data, and I use that in the broader sense of the word, was... Um, roundly deprecated by the journalist Frankie Mullen who saw that actually the initial data was from a self-selecting mm -hmm. group on a web, uh, on a PR agency essentially that advertised on Mumsnet mm -hmm. and the idea was that you asked your child if it watched porn. Now I'm, <laughs> I'm 42, <laughs> I'm an obscenity lawyer and I have difficulty talking to my mum about porn. And literally, when, when she said she'd read Fifty Shades, that was it. Conversation over, read. So the idea... Now, introduce actual, uh, actual academic ethics into this. This was a joke, and I declare an interest here. I've worked for the NSPCC. I agree with child protection aims. This is a very dubious as to whether it is a legitimate child protection aim. And as my colleague says, absolutely, this is going to get lost. Uh, we've seen via the Digital Policy Alliance that, as predicted, of course, it is the canary in the coal mine. Other freedoms will fall. And they're already looking at age, age verification for knives, mm, guns, mm, tobacco, Alcohol, suicide. I'm like, how are you verifying someone's age for suicide? I, I don't even get. Well, it, 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 it used to be illegal at all ages, so, so you nominally. Know. <laughs> but um, don't be uh, in any way fooled. This will continue down this uh, down this slope. Um, again, as Noel was saying with robotics, it is inevitable the direction we're going in. However, as the open rights group, we have got a few possible causes of action until the May date to try and improve at least privacy and security. Yeah. Okay. So I pick up on that briefly before we go to questions? I was just going to ask how many people have questions. Okay, could somebody with microphones pick two of them and get them ready <laughs> Shall I do while, quick? Yeah, while you do your thing? Yeah, so the main problem here is that the publicly accessible standard that's being produced yeah. by the Digital Policy Alliance merely prevents the personal data that's being collected by age verification from providers from being shared with porn sites like mine, which is great, but it's completely insufficient because especially when one of the AV providers is owned by the biggest porn site in the world, the um, law and the standard says nothing about the requirements of the age verification solutions themselves. So there's currently absolutely nothing to um, ensure that the data is blinded, to ensure that it's minimised, and to ensure that it's not retained um, unless absolutely necessary. And so um, one of the things that we're agitating for is for the privacy um, standard to, um, to give the regulator power to regulate the age verification providers. At the moment, the um, new regulator is only going to be regulating sites like mine to ensure that they're compliant. And we're only compliant if we're using compliant solutions. But there's, abs there's absolutely no recourse um, on the regulator's part if they discover that a provider is collecting data, abusing it, monetizing it, leaking it. And so we would like the regulator to be able to have this power because otherwise with the best will in the world, even if they're operating in completely good faith, 
um, they might end up being completely toothless and the way the legislation currently stands. And I think the Open Rights Group have drafted an amendment um, which is going to be introduced to the, Dig the Data Protection Act. Yeah, we've Parliament drafted an moment. amendment to the Data Protection Act, yeah. which essentially would insert a duty to consider privacy and security and to actively regulate it rather than a mere consideration of it. So in simple terms, it's a must rather than a should. In practical terms, we hope that this will be a specific exemption in, or, or extension of data protection to this area, giving the regulator the ability to say, Ashley Madison style hacks where people commit suicide as a consequence of data being leaked into the public domain about sexual information is not acceptable. Okay, we have a ton of questions and not a lot of time. So if you can be um, succinct, that would be really great. Um, we're starting over there, I guess. So given the um, privacy concerns we've got, are these providers, I've got two questions. One, are these providers going to be in the EU? And two, are we going to be able to use the GDPR regulations in order to fight back a bit? Okay, I'm gonna actually, let's take questions in groups of two, so. <coughs> I'll be brief, um, Adam, um, campaign against censorship. Um, my question's twofold. Basically, Miles has already mentioned one backdoor in a uh, loophole in the new laws whereby you'd be able to enter it via Facebook. What is to stop people from, um, if you're into any particular niche of porn, sure. to receive something via email? Or are the government going, it's going to be so intrusive they're going to intercept people's email as well with the Investigative Powers Act? Secondly, if and when the ISPs are hit with heavy fines by the government, What's to stop them doing what the banking industry is going to do and leaving the country and relocating somewhere else? Google. Um, while they're talking, maybe move okay, the so microphones well. around to the next yeah. two people. Oh, people right. put their hands up so they can see. <laughs> okay. So uh, Sorry, I was so focused on that question. You had a, uh, a two-part question. Yes, if the providers would be in the EU and whether GDPR right. provided so any protection. What we need to think about, my opinion, is the oops, global nature of the internet. Okay. So yes, GDPR could apply within EU, OBS, but the problem is, is that sufficient? Is that, is it, it's like, it's the CCTV of protection. It doesn't stop crime, it merely records it happening, thereby, if there is an infraction, there is a possibility of, in CCTV terms, uh, prosecution. But the infraction's already occurred. Is that sufficient? That's my rhetorical uh, response to that. So in other words, we would, as the Open Rights Group, like to see a greater culture of data protection above and beyond the GDPR standard. And this seems to be, with the 25 million uh, mark that I have uh, quoted, very good example of where data breach could uh, affect a third of the people in this room. And honestly, ask yourselves privately, do you really want your personal sexual preferences leaked into the public domain, possibly with identifying information to show exactly who you are? Quickly on GDPR, in the case of the MindGeek solution, all they need to do is, when you've logged in, ask you, um, do you consent to us customising the porn that we show you? Um, and they've got your consent to collect data on your viewing history. So, I mean, a lot of users wouldn't necessarily know exactly what they were saying yes to when they ticked that, but it's quite easy to get consent if you ask the right questions. In answer to your question, I think even if they leave the country, if they are selling, if they are providing services to UK residents, they will be caught in the net. It won't matter where they're physically based. Yeah. Next two, one there. Uh, so, yeah, I've got uh, two questions as well. Um, so, <laughs> this is cheating. Uh, the first one is if we can, if some of these age verification things are as simple as taking a selfie, um, why aren't we, as a privacy centric group, looking at creating our own age verification register? Uh, we, you know, we, um, Open Rights Group managed to create blocks, maybe we could do the same thing. Um, and secondly, as I understand the law, if you were um, abroad or whatever, then the, the most they can do is uh, block you. So why aren't some people um, incorporating a Seychelles uh, limited company um, doing everything like that and encouraging their users to use VPNs or Tor or anything like that so they can't get fined, they can't get blocked, etc. So uh, the... Wait, wait, we're taking another question okay. before we answer. So I managed infrastructure at one point. 
So any technical solution, I'm just going to assume it's broken because MPs aren't going to discuss everything from access logs to what kind of box you lock the broken hard disks in before you shred them and who shreds them, which is a beautiful thing to see, but it's not implemented well. So now that brings us to the cycle where a hacker breaks the thing. And though I adore my white cisgender hetero um, dude colleagues, uh, what would you say to such a hacker who gets a system, is breaking it, and then maybe um, doesn't think about the implications yeah, yeah. of leaking things and making things worse? Yeah, cool. Okay, so just in order. Um, so firstly, I've heard quite a few one of the reasons that this is bad for small websites like mine is that there's going to be a cost associated with running these age checks, um, which, based on economies of scale, small websites are really going to be unlikely to be able to afford. So um, I think the idea of a um, privacy um, prioritizing um, age verification solution is a good one. I'd particularly like it to be open source and free to site owner. Um, I am considering organizing a hackathon. So um, maybe we could talk to Org about doing something about that. Um, and what was your other question? Um, oh, yeah. yeah, so the, other, yeah um, so the other thing is that this law um, affects any site which is accessible by anybody within the UK, wherever that website is based or operated from um, in the world. Because MindGeek is based in Canada, and like most of the under-18s who look at porn are looking at free porn, um, and most of those sites are owned by MindGeek. So they had to make it um, apply outside the UK, which is why um, just moving a website overseas doesn't really help. And um, that's why they had to bring in web blocking as a sanction, because the UK regulator has no jurisdiction overseas. Mm -hmm. But the problem with web blocking is that it's massively disproportionate. And um, how, in, how is this list going to be maintained, you know? It's like tainted love, I hear. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> God, I want to get down with Sex Dwarf now. Sorry, that may be a bit lost on some people. That was a soft sell reference. Um, really fast. Can I just make a point about the regulator? So the regulator hasn't been designated yet. <clears throat> now, at the moment, we are under the impression the BBFC are positioning themselves to do so. But there may be a bid from Ofcom. However, with your consent... I would like to volunteer myself to become the censor for the entire internet. Now, this may seem farcical. Please stop laughing. But it would be possible for an independent organisation such as the Open Rights Group, Privacy International, Index on Censorship, to create a censorship body to look after the internet, challenge the BBFC and Ofcom, and perhaps put this in the long grass for a few years. That's mere speculation on my part, but if you'd like to give me a fiver each, I'll run for it, all right? Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. Since, so, since you have a microphone in your hand... And there's another question we didn't answer yet. Yeah, there was. That was well, a great question. We're, we have 30 hacker. seconds. Don't do it. Think about privacy, but think about consent, right? I think we don't think about privacy and the, uh, the violation thereof without consent, and consent culture is essential, whether it be sexual or otherwise within society. So would I see it as circumventing the law? Sorry, I was so talking to, to the person behind yeah. you. I do apologise. Okay, he's got the microphone, so we're going to let him ask one last question. A quick question and personal uh, reference. I started actively and willingly seeking out pornography when I was 10 years old. Sure. I do not think that two generations later this has changed drastically. Nope. <laughs> so my point is, what is the name of the person in government who believes that the lowest government bidder has a decisive time and energy advantage over the collective hormones of all the world's teenagers. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll summarise. Okay, uh, so I think we just want a quick summary on that point, which is very trenchant. So, yes, agreed. This was a Tory policy uh, in the manifesto, one line, censor internet for pornography and classify music videos. It has led to the derogation in, in, in effect of responsibility from the government, from the state, to private third party corporate interests in pornography with absolutely no regulatory oversight of security or privacy. 
I don't want to see that. I hope you don't. Okay, on that happy note, or unhappy note. I want to tell a story about a dog. Thank you all very much. Thank you.